Hello and welcome to another Popper video. This is a trophy report, the metagame for Magic Online. And the metagame has two cards that are really dominant in here. We got Basking Broodscale and Bushwhacker. So this week we are going to dive into the Magic Online 5-0s as well as look at a little bit of the challenge. This was the week of the 21st through the 27th. And we actually had 156 5 0s on Magic Online, which is really awesome. That is a lot. That's way over what we were seeing in the previous uh, 5 0s. We actually saw 31 on one of the days, which almost was enough to get some of the lists cut. Wow. Uh, before we get into it, make sure to ch uh, check out patreon.com slash calikais if you want to get any sideboard guides for the decks I like to play. Make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the decks and uh, which one looks really awesome in the comments below. I love to hear back from everybody. Check out cardmarket.com if you want to pick up some of these lists, the largest seller of Magic the Gathering cards in Europe. And on August 24th, there will be a Popper 2K in Binghamton, New York, linked in the description below that uh, I'll definitely be going to. So hopefully I'll see you there. All right, so what's going on with the metagame? Most of the meta, most of the trophies was from brood scale combo people are absolutely crushing with this deck but it's kind of all over the place there's black green there's jun there's different versions of black green that's wild then that was 17 percent of the five o's then we have mono red at 14 percent affinity and mono blue terror if you look at the previous week we had mono red affinity brood scale and white weenie so now this week it's mono red affinity brood scale and terror White Weenie dropping off a bit. So basically what that says to me is that these are the three best decks, Brood Scale, Mono Red, and Affinity. And then some other deck is just going to pop up to be like the anti-meta deck of the week. And that's probably going to just fluck, be in flux as that all goes on. I think Mono Blue Terror is like a pretty strong deck in general. So that's uh, a good choice. And we also saw that the next best decks are Mono Islands, Mono uh, Plains. So you're looking to be very um, clean with your mana base if you want to be succe successful. So on a whole, we're looking at over here, Brood Scale, Mono Red, Affinity, and Mono Blue Terror with a smattering of other decks. Pretty much, it's a little bit less than the total from the previous week, which we saw, oh, uh, you can't see that. Let's move it over here. So the previous week was the four decks on top, reaching over here on the left and then this week they're not quite as uh powerful so they're not taking as much of the metagame we're seeing a little bit uh come through with gardens and white weenie over here all right back to that so why don't we go ahead and get into the days on the first day nothing was overpowered it looks like we had two trophies for mono red affinity white weenie rule ponza just guy ephemerate. And then we had one trophy for Brood Scale, Mono Blue Terror, Cogate, and then Gruel No Ponza, Walls, Demir Terror, Madness Burn, and a Gruel Madness Burn, which is sweet. Uh, some, a little bit of changes to the Floiza list by Floiza themselves. And then a Mono Black Control. So checking out the Mono Black Control, this is basically the Gardens deck not playing any green. They're actually playing Desert, which is. When a creature attacks, you can ping it for one at the end of combat, which is kind of cool. I don't know what they're trying to hit but with Desert in this metagame specifically. They've got main deck spell bombs, lots of Lembus. They've got the Toxin Analysis plus Crypt Rats combo to literally wipe the entire board versus the Kroar Clan Shaman version. It also gains them a bunch of life. So they could like Crypt Rats for five with the Toxin Analysis on it and gain, gain up to 50 life and just keep uh, doing stuff. And they've got four candy trails, but I don't even see campfires in the deck. So they're not looking to loop. They've got campfires in the sideboard here. Wow. Okay. The next deck I wanted to highlight was a Colgate deck. Um, they're playing fourth Raven Charm main charm. So this deck, this actually makes the deck really strong. Um, I think that Thraven Charm is really good as just two mana deal two damage. So like you put your sacred cat turn two, you have a shock. As soon as you get two creatures in play, it's deal four damage and three creatures in play, it's basically cast down, which is very, very powerful. And this deck puts a lot of creatures in play. They're still playing Guardian of the Guild Pack and they have a Coalition Honor Guard in the main deck. 
as an answer to brood scale combo in the main. On four counter spell and two spell pierce is interesting as well. They've got standard bear in the sideboard. So they actually have two journey and fourth raven charms for six removal spells. So let's check out the gruel ramp. This is my kind of deck, right? It's just put big stuff on the table. They're playing avenging hunter. What's forerunner? Trample other creatures you control have trampled. That's pretty good with the rising rising crystals and boarding parties. They're only on three avenging hunters. So this deck is playing zero uh, thermocarst or any sort of uh, land destruction, and they're playing malevolent rumble and lead the stampede as kind of like refills, which is pretty sick. Only six wild growth effects. Interesting. So here's your madness burn from Floiza. This is four bristling backwood, four furnace, two tree of tails, some gruel turfs for card advantage, and slagwood bridge, so that they can play four galvanic, two bolt, and four fiery temper for ten burn spells. They're still enjoying it. Looks like cathartic reunion and playing highway robbery. I think at this point, um, maybe. Highway Robbery is not as good as Demand Answers, but the nice thing about Highway Robbery is that you can plot it, although they're not playing as many uh, amount of like two drop madness creatures. They're playing just the Basking Root Wall as a madness creature. And then you've got four Tomb Raider, four Epicure, two Scrapwork Mutt, and the four Sneaky Snacker, which is a very, very, very powerful card in this kind of deck, as well as three Rancors, which is interesting. Turn those uh, Basking Root Wall into big threats. On day two, the 22nd, we see four mono red, four gardens. Gardens is a pretty good deck against the brute scale deck specifically. Uh, removal pile, it's pretty hard to deal with for the brute, brute scale deck, or at least when I'm trying to play it. Then we have three affinities, two brute scales, two cogate, and one ofs for mono blue terror, white weenie, Jeskai ephemerate, blue uh, demir fey, which popping up again, that's pretty cool, and it bogles. So this Jeskai Ephemerate by Bongo, or Bongo411, they're playing the um, energy package, which is for Galvanic Discharge, Jolted Awake, and Tune the Narrative. There's no other energy in the deck, but they can actually use Jolted Awake as a one mana, put your artifact or creature card onto the battlefield, which is really, really strong. And it also makes the mana base a little bit easier on them, I think. They got the four each of these bridges, and then they can play Perilous Landscape. They don't have to worry about Scred. And I think in the early game, Galvanic Discharge is better than Scred, and then later on, you can get it just as good as Scred as well. They're also playing God Pharaoh's Faithful on the sideboard for burn decks, interesting. Here's a Brood Scale combo by Campo, who has been playing kind of, I would call it the off-meta version of this deck, but he's playing kind of a creature focused version where you have something like Slitherhead as a zero mana way to get a um, a plus one plus one counter. Rebel Belt Maverick can also add counters. A Cursed Marauder as a removal spell because this says ETB each player sacrifices a non-token creature. An Evolution, a Mesmeric Fiend, Evolution Witness, Nightmares, Nightblade. Uh, this deck looks so confusing to me, but they seem to be doing quite well with it. So congrats to them, they're still crushing. That's a kind of a different version if you want to check that out. And remember, all these will be in the description below, all the links to these days. So here's a Demir Fairies by Out Zero. I don't think I see anything too crazy here. Jukabog. Yeah, no. We've got Steel Sabotage on the sideboard. A lot of one ofs with the Ambusher, Murmuring Mystic, Thorn of the Black Rose, and an Okiba Gang. But there's so much card selection in this kind of deck that it makes sense. They're playing two Brainstorm and three Preordain, which is a very interesting split on that. I don't know how I feel about that kind of thing. It seems to work for them. Here's a Cogates by Selkis, who decided to cut Guardian the Guild Pact. And they're going just three Thraben Charms with no amount of Journey to Nowhere in the main deck. So that seems kind of aggressive, but it seems to work out as well. Outlaw Medic has a four of Sacred Cat and Domringer Cleric, so they've got ten life gain creatures in the main deck. They're really prepared for Mono Red in the main here. On the next day, the 23rd, we've got <laughs> seven trophies from Mono Red, so it looks like Selkis was on the right path. Then we have four Brute Scale, four Affinity, and five for Mono Blue Terror. Two of for Cogate, and one for White Weenie, Gardens, Is It Terror, which is the Scred Terror deck. 
Rule no Ponza. <laughs> I like to see that. Jeskai Ephemerate, Walls, Demir Terror, Dredge, and Elves. So looking at the Demir Terror deck, this is a only Terror and Snacker as their creatures, but they also have four Modern Age in the deck for creatures that can also pitch the Snackers. And Deha Deploy to pitch the Snacker, which is kind of sweet. Um, that's something to check out if you want to be trying to play Demir Terror. Get a lot of value for the Sneaky Snackers, that's for sure. I have not tried this deck yet. And here's a Brood Scale combo deck from Hype12232. And they're playing a version to play Four Snarling Gorehound, which says whenever a creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you get to surveil. This means your Brood Scale goes off, you make a, infinite creatures that are zero ones, you get infinite surveils, which means you're putting your entire graveyard into your, li or your entire library into your graveyard, getting an infinitely sized Brood Scale. And then you can filter the, the colorless mana with Jack Lantern, because that will be in your graveyard now, to make a mana of any color. And then you can use the mana to make red and jumpstart a Gravitic Punch, dealing infinite damage to your opponent. Of course, this does not work versus Prismatic Strands. So if you mill your entire library and then you Gravitic Punch them and they strand you, you're dead. But you also have a bunch of ways to do other stuff. But this is the only combo win in the deck. And because they're playing the Gorehound, they're also on four Mesmeric Fiend over... Wow, they're on four Mesmeric Fiend and three Duress and two Safekeeping. So they're playing a, a lot of interaction, surprisingly large amount, but no like, no Wellsprings. They're playing Bequeathal instead. Interesting, interesting. Uh, there's definitely no consensus on how to build Brood Scale at this time. On the next day, we have three mono reds so much more spread out this time two brood scale two white weenie one ofs for terror colgate is a terror so mono blue terror and is a terror grill no ponza demir control this time blue white familiars and a green white initiative so up here the green white initiative from adepto terra he likes to call this green white rock or the rock and the way this works is you're going to be just ramping with wild growth utopia sprawl arbor elf and Lanamar Visionary, putting down your Avenging Hunter and your Goliath Paladin ASAP. You've also got Generous Ent. And then Pegasus Guardian, it can flicker a creature. When you make it a creature with the five and a white for a 3-3 three, three flyer, it says at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, create a 1-1 one, one white Pegasus creature token with flying. And we've got four Ephemerates, plus the Malevolent Rumble. And you can sacrifice the creature, which also turns on the Pegasus Guardian. So Ephemerate and Flicker, a bunch of Flickers in the deck, that's pretty sweet. And they're on Armadillo Cloak or the Sideboard for Red, Honor Guard for the Brood Scale combo, Guardian Naga for Affinity. And then they said that they actually swapped the Thermokarst for Thraben Charm, which just warms my heart. Any Thermokarst gone is great. I'm sorry, Ponza Gamers, I know you like to have fun, but I... <laughs> it ruins mine, come on. Everybody is uh, entitled to their own way to play, that is for sure. And we will see that later with the deck that I managed to trophy with. So here we have a Familiars deck from Borbs, and they're mixing Seagate Oracle and Modern Age and Meeting of Minds. So this on a whole is kind of sweet. I don't know how it plays out. I'm interested in checking this deck out for sure. They're on Thraben Charm in the main deck, which I think is good. And a couple of cantrips, only three faithful is kind of strange to me in a uh, metagame like this, but they're fixing it with Dawnmare Cleric and Blue Blast in the sideboard. They've got the six anti-affinity, exclude for guardians, deep analysis for control. It makes a lot of sense. So here is a spicy Demir control from Carves. And by spicy, I mean turn two, Firming Mystic or Thorn of the Black Rose. You could even go Swamp, Double Dark Ritual, Thorn of the Black Rose on turn one. And this is just straight up control with a campfire in the main to loop. Wow. So if you like playing blue, blue black control, maybe check out the carves list, but carves is also a, a wild man and he plays like really with funky lists. He's got three brainstorm, three ponder and two preordain, which is six, eight cantrips, but splitting them around brainstorm and ponder work better with the shuffling and preordain works better with just, you know, card selection. Here's a really cool uh, Jund combo 
brute scale list from Zamu, who's playing four brute scale, four chrysalis, but no artifact. Playing two draws forge bridge, but that's it for artifact lands and the tree of tails. Sorry, no wildfire is what I was trying to say. And this means that they can kind of play a mid range plan, but also have the same kind of like turbo combo as the green black deck, which I think is kind of sweet. We've got four duress and two safekeepings in the main deck, seven deadly dispute effects, and four malevolent rumble. And they're playing four star, four wellspring, one refractor, with two makeshift munitions to seal the deal. I'm kind of interested in this list specifically. I might have to try that out later. Okay, here comes the spice on the next day. On the 25th, we have eight brood scale trophies. Brood scale was crushing. We have five mono blue terrors. And then next is two for mono red and is a terror. One of for affinity, white weenie, cogate, ponza, grill no ponza, dredge elves, Gruel Storm from yours truly, uh, which you can see in a video that I posted last week, and Tortured Existence from Love Crayons. So I never thought I would see this day, but Love Crayons is playing Tortured Existence to a 5 0. They've got uh, Tortured Existence, Malevolent Rumble, Commune, and then Four Evolution Witness, which I think makes a lot of sense in this deck because it can get back the Tortured Existence and then you can discard other stuff to get back the Witness. So this is the grindy, grindy deck that everybody thinks that it's too slow to play on Magic Online, but Love Crayons is crushing, so congrats to them. That is awesome. Here's my Red Green Storm. This is actually the second trophy that I made with the Storm deck, but the original one was uh, not posted. That was with the... Um, Burning Prophet version. So this deck looks to get a couple of Anarchomancer or Thornscape effects into the into play, and then you're going to play Big Score or Pirate's Pillage, which rummage and make treasures to actually continue moving through your deck and making mana with the treasures, because eventually they'll be mana positive, and then you blast your opponent with Gutter Snipe. Love it. On the second to last day, we have five Brood Scale, five Affinity. Four mono blue terror, three of's for mono red and Jeskai ephemerate, which is nice for them. A Golgari Gardens, a terror, Vogels, a mono white heroic, and a tireless tribe. Let's see if the tireless tribe player has done anything different. Gianlupo has been the only person really winning with tireless tribe lately. Looks like nothing super interesting. They can. Bounce a creature for one blue blue. They can return non land permanent. They don't control this owner's hand. And then they've got Benevolent Bodyguard in the main deck. And then Tireless Tribe Squadron Hawk for Squadron Hawk can refill your hand to discard to this Tireless Tribe. And they've got White Out, which turns all of your snow covered lands into more uh, discard fodder for the Tireless Tribe. Just wanted to highlight the Mono White Heroic here from Terminus. They really love playing Heroic. This doesn't look like anything too funky, but they got in there. And then here's another Brute Scale combo by Zamu. And this time they went for just Black Green. And it uh, looks like they're going Candy Trail as some additional card selection, which makes a lot of sense. On the last day, we have five Brute Scale combo. Three for Affinity and Ponza, and then two for Mono Red, two for Golgari Gardens, one White Weenie, one Terror, one Gruel No Ponza, one Walls, one Demir Terror, and one Demir Control. So let's see if there's anything too funky. All right, we got two lists to look at here. I guess we already have seen the Zamu list, and maybe this. Okay, yeah, that was Zamu's list again. But here, this Brute Scale list uh, is kind of the first iteration of what I was calling the Scam deck, but it's playing Affinity plus Basking Brute Scale so that you get to go Galvanic Blast you, Crockland Shaman Wipe your board, Refurbish Familiar, Mirror Enforcer Spam, but we also have the backup combo of Brute Scale and uh, Sadistic Lee. So I'm definitely interested in trying to solve this kind of deck. It's pretty fun to play. And they have the 10 draw spells, which I think is pretty important, actually, if you want to be playing this kind of deck, because you do run out of steam. So that is the metagame on, let's check out the 
uh, let's check out the challenges. So this was Friday's challenge. Grixis Affinity in the top place at 21%. Did really, really well. Uldotha then Terror next. We're following that up. On the next day, we had Mono Blue Terror as the most played deck. Grixis Affinity following that up. Both of those did relatively well. And then White Weenie Bolt after it, not doing super hot. Following on Sunday was Grixis Affinity with the most played. The pretty good win rate here at 53%. And then Eldrazi Stompy, which was the no ponza list at 55%, followed up by Koldotha and Gardens. So if you want to be playing in this metagame right now, I think you probably want to be on some sort of Brood Scale, Affinity, or Mono Red. And then you could always check out Gruel Eldrazi Stompy if you want to put out big boys and smash. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.